Hello boys and girls. Today's story is called The Day You Begin and it was written by Jacqueline Woodson and illustrated by Rafael Lopez. And so this is a picture of our main character at the beginning of the book. And it's dedicated to Saya, Nell, and Josie, to Santiago, Moon Whisperer. And here's a picture of our character reading a book. There will be times when you walk into a room and no one there is quite like you. Look at the picture. Maybe it will be your skin, your clothes, or the curl in your hair. There will be times when no one understands the way words curl from your mouth the beautiful language of the country you left behind. My name is Rigoberto. We just moved here from Venezuela. And because they don't understand, the classroom will fill with laughter until the teacher quiets everyone down. Rigoberto from Venezuela, your teacher says so soft and beautifully that your name and homeland sound like flowers blooming the first bright notes of a song. And that's what he thinks about his teacher's introduction. There will be times when the words don't come. Your own voice, once huge, now smaller, when the teacher asks, what did you do last summer? Tell the class your story. We went to France, Charla says. These shells came from a beach in Maine. A boy named Jonathan holds out a jar filled with tiny shells, so fragile. They look like they'll turn to dust in your untraveled hands. My whole family went to India, Spain, South Carolina. Each souvenir, a small triumph of a journey, a trip. Their travels going on and on. And here's everybody telling about what they did during that summer. I don't think this summer many people will be traveling all around. And as you stand in front of that room, you can only remember how the heat waved as it lifted off the curb and your days spent at home, caring for your little sister who made you laugh out loud and hugged you hard at nap time. You can only remember the books you kept on reading long after she had fallen to sleep. And in that room where no one else is quite like you, You'll look down at your own empty hands and wonder, what good is this when other students were flying and sailing and going somewhere? So there she is. She still got her book after she read to her sister. There will be times when the lunch your mother packed for you is too strange or too unfamiliar for others to love as you do. And there she is sitting in the lunchroom. When even your own friend Nadia will wrinkle her nose and say, ooh, what's in there anyway? And you'll wonder how she doesn't see the rice beneath the meat and kimchi. You'll wonder why she doesn't remember that rice is the most popular food in all the world. 
<clears throat> there will be times when the climbing bars are too high, the run is too fast and far, the game isn't one you can ever really play. I don't want him on our team. You can watch. Maybe you can have a turn later. And here's this little boy. Not feeling very welcome, is he? There will be times when the world feels like a place that you're standing all the way outside of. Let's see, here's... And all that stands beside you is your own brave self, steady as steel and ready, even though you don't yet know what you are ready for. There will be times when you walk into a room and no one there is quite like you until the day you begin to share your stories. My name is Angelina, and I spent my whole summer with my little sister, you tell the class, your voice stronger than it was a minute ago, reading books and telling stories. And even though we were right on our block, it was like we got to go everywhere. Your name is like my sister's, Rigoberto says. Her name is Angelina, too. And all at once, in the room where no one else is quite like you, the world opens itself up a little wider to make some space for you. This is the day you begin to find the places inside your laughter and your lunches your books, your travel, and your stories, where every new friend has something a little like you and something else so fabulously not quite like you at all. And you know, boys and girls, I grew up in the Ozark Mountains, and when I first went to Wisconsin to high school, everybody laughed at the way I talked. They didn't know what I was saying a lot of times. And so a lot of times I didn't say very much at all. And they would say, Susie, say such and such a thing again. That sounds so funny to us. Why do you say y'all when you're only talking to one person? So we all have to begin someplace, and a lot of times it doesn't make any difference what we look like, how we speak, what words we say, or what we do. We just all have to have courage to keep on going. Okay, boys and girls, that's my story for today, and I will see you in another story.